Hey guys. Well, today I'm back up in the barn and I'm up potting my tomato plants. Now, I started all my tomatoes in the Hoss 162 trays. And I'll give you a shot of this. These trays here. And uh, you can see I've already got most of my tomatoes out of this tray. Um, I've got these are Sun Gold from Hoss Tool and these are Homestead tomatoes from Hoss Tool. And we're going to get ready to up pot those. I did most of these guys last night. Let me give you a shot of that so you can see what. And I up potted them to three inch pots. And this camera's gonna switch on me here in a minute because of that light, but you can see we stepped them up from a 162 to this guy here. And I watered everything in real good and I put them on this top rack. Got the heat mats going just a little bit. You see the heat mat. And uh, everything looks like it's doing real good. But, you know, we should be pretty close to putting tomatoes in the ground right now. But, you know, the weather here in North Carolina is always kind of screwy in the spring. You'll get several days that'll be in the 80s, and you'll think, yep, about that time. And then, wham, you'll get a frost. It's already frosted one time this week, and we're actually looking at two more frost days towards the end of this week. And then hopefully, after that, we'll be done with the frost. We'll be done with the cooler weather. We're talking about lows in the upper 50s and highs in the mid 70s for like the next 10 days. And I'm thinking that's tomato pepper weather, you know, for me. My peppers and I got a tray down here. Let me pull this. That's what I'll tell you. These guys here, I up potted them. Well, I actually started these in three inch pots. But you can see they're all ready to go in the garden. And I've been trying to harden them off here for the last couple of days. Uh, and, you know, hardening off plants is a little tricky, especially when it's super hot. And I don't like to do it when it's hot. Days like today when it's cloudy, I set them outside at the edge of the barn. You know, let the wind get to them. Um, let a little bit of sun get to them. But I don't leave them out there long, and then I'll pull them back in. Um, so far, they've done great. Now, these plants on this rack here, stayed in the barn out from under the grow lights um, all day today. And uh, you know, that's one step closer to getting them ready to go out in the garden. Now, in my opinion, I think I've got another week, maybe just a little bit more to get ready to put them in the garden. I still got to get the tomato plot ready. Um, I've turned it over with a disc. I got to go through it with a tiller and then I got to run some rows. But before I can do that, I can't leave these homestead tomatoes or any of those other tomatoes. You see how big they are uh, in that 162, much longer they'll get root bound. Now, I've got some three inch pots left, but I'm about to run out. But I've got these from where I bought some plants a couple years ago and I saved them. You know, I always save your cups. You never know when you're gonna need them. So, that's a little much, but you know, it is what it is, I got to use it. So, we're gonna pull the homestead tomatoes out here. They are uh, a seed from house tools. It's a determinant. And it's also an heirloom tomato. Now, so far, this plant, and let me see if I can pull one out. Yeah, see, these dudes are ready to go. That, uh, see that root ball? And that's the line that they tell you about all the time, where it trains the roots to grow down, which actually it does. So, um, but look how blocky that plant is. I mean, it's, it's a good looking tomato plant. And they claim, you know, it'll grow up to like eight ounce fruit, you know, which is a half a pound. It's like a good sandwich type tomato, but they're claiming that it is good for also making salsa, um, canning, things of that nature. And you know, they said some studies, they got 50 pounds of fruit off of one plant. So you guys know determinant tomatoes, you're gonna to get a harvest you know, all at one time and then nothing else. So succession plant tomatoes. I got another batch of seeds coming in here pretty soon from Hoss Tool. Matter of fact, it should be here Friday. But all these tomatoes, they're going out in the garden, they'll get started, then I'll start another batch of seeds in the greenhouse along with my squash and cucumbers and all that stuff. So as I have tomatoes, tomato plants dying in the garden and coming, you know, doing their thing and then production falling off, I can take them out, throw another set right in the garden. That's the plan anyway. But I've also got sun gold tomatoes in there from Hoss Tools and I'm not even going to attempt to take them out of the trash because they're not ready. I know they're not. But so once I get done with these homestead tomatoes, I'm going to fertilize these sun goals because they need it. And then they will be in this tray all by their lonesome for another week or two before I try to up pot them. 
but right now I need 18 of these homestead. I planted 27, but I need 18 of them for what I'm going to use, and then I'll keep the rest of them in pots. And you know, I always give my mother-in-law some, and you know, a few friends of mine. So, um, so far this year has been great for tomato plants for me. Normally I struggle with tomatoes uh, and peppers. But as all of this stuff's getting planted, guys, this is a learning curve for me also. And this year, you know, I'm planting more than I normally do just to get used to keeping up with that many plants because this is my, I'm going to say, training year to get me ready for market farming. And, you know, I still hold down a full-time job and do this on my time. But, you know, this is a small setup compared to what I plan to have in the future but I want to get used to taking care of this many plants <clears throat> seeing how I can grow plants the fastest and be more successful at seed starting and things of that nature you know this is me stepping up my seed starting game by starting you know 162 tomato plants never going to use that many but I did it I got a ton of tomatoes which we will use we'll we'll sell and I mean we'll give away but this is how I'm learning to take care of a lot of things. You know, I've always had gardens and I've always planted a few here there and I've started my own seed, but this is a step up from what I'm used to. So I'm taking this year to learn how to do it and be successful at it, nail it down what I like to use and you know, just go grow from there. So what I'm using is happy fun. And I mean, you don't have to use it. Uh, you can use whatever pot soil you like. Happy Frog is just what I have on hand. I did have some uh, miracle Grow pot and soil last night. That's what most of those plants are in. But I had bought that bag of Happy Frog because I seen you know some tests with it, and I wanted to try it for myself to see what it would do. But uh, these cups here, what I'm going to do is fill it up about a quarter of the way, and then I'm going to pull one of these stalks off. And you can see this. This is really simple. And then I'm gonna get it about sitting on top of that. And then I'm gonna fill it the rest of the way up. Fill the rest of the way up with pot soil. So, and then I'm just gonna mash it down in there to kind of pack it in. Get that started. And you know, that's basically it. Once I get done, I'll water everything in. So once you get it packed in, go back and top it off. Make sure it's full. Guys, you got to remember, when you start the seeds, you're starting with a sterile uh, seed start mix. It means it has no nutrients whatsoever. And, you know, as you're going along, you're adding water, get the seed started, and then it needs to be fed. And I'm hoping that's when you start adding fertilizer in small amounts um, to your water to feed your plants. But once they get this big, they need more. And that seed start mix, even though you're mixing fertilizer with it, just... A fine line to having enough and having too much. That's where this new pot soil comes in because it does have nutrients in it. It will make the plant jump. So what we're going to do is we're going to get busy potting all these up. Should be 18 of them by the time I get done. I may do a few more just to give it away. But um, when I get done with them, I'll give you a shot of what they look like and you know how I'm going. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put them at. I'm probably going to put them in this small greenhouse, but. Um, I'm hoping I can make them hold on for another week or two at least. Then they'll be going out in the garden. Uh, we'll have everything hardened off. I got more peppers I got to harden off and I got a bunch of lettuce in there that's going to be ready to go in the garden here at least another week or two. So I got to harden all that stuff off too. Then we're going to get started on squash and cucumbers and all that kind of good stuff. Get that started. I normally direct seed all my cucumbers and squash and cantaloupes, watermelons, things of that nature. But just for the sake of learning, I'm thinking I'm gonna start everything in uh, trays or in pots and transplant them in the garden. I've got more garden space this year than I've ever had. Um, you know, I went through and took the time in the winter time. I standardized everything and did a lot of measuring, did a lot of thinking, um, did a lot of walking to maximize the space I have in my garden. And without a doubt, I can grow more food in that little garden that I got now than I'll ever eat in you know two years probably. But you know, like I said, we will be stepping out into market farming 
maybe not this year. We may in the fall. We may go ahead and jump out there in the fall when it comes to uh, collards and things of that nature. But for the most part, I'm hoping um, over this coming winter that I will be able to go ahead and get my greenhouses constructed, get my nursery put up, and have a better uh, business plan for what I want to do. And I'll have a target that I want to hit by then. So I'm taking this time to learn you know, the basics to get that under my belt. Then I'll start with the, you know, the greenhouses and, you know, uh, where I'm going to move my produce and all that good stuff. But right now, I want to make sure I can grow it. I want to make sure that I can take keep it alive, and I want to make sure I can harvest it and sell it. So this year is kind of a learning curve, but so far I'm real pleased with what, you know, what I've done and what I've gotten. And I'm hoping that, you know, as we move into the heat of summer, we can continue to learn more about irrigation and how we're going to do it and, you know, what it takes to keep large amounts of food alive and just learn from there. All right, guys. Well, I'm done up potting those homestead tomatoes. And I ended up with eight in this tray. And I ended up with 10 in this tray. So what I got to do now is water all these in real, real good. And then I'm going to get them back up in the grow lights. Um, you know, they're going to have just a little bit of transplant shock, but hopefully with a good water and some good light, you know, they'll spring right, right back out of it. Um, once we see, you know, the plants kind of standing back up and they look like they're getting strong, then we'll hit them with a small dose of fertilizer to start with, and then we'll wait about four days, and then we'll hit them with another good dose of fertilizer, and that should get them on their feet, strike out out the gate. So, so guys, yeah, it's another rainy day here in North Carolina, but we've got plenty of work to do here. I'm going to get started getting these things watered in and uh, get everything else towards the door so it can be hardening off anymore, even more. <laughs> well, guys, I know this is short, but uh, I wanted to show you that about the tomatoes, how we up, how I up pot them, and uh, you know, where we're at with everything that's in the greenhouse, getting ready to go out in the garden. And I've got this big old bag of seed right here that I just got in from Hoss Tool um, that we're going to go through and get started here pretty soon. i got to make some room, though, because everything's full. But I got partial clip squash, Ben is green tent squash. I got moonbean squash. I got gold star squash. I hear a lot of good things about that one. I've got the national and pickling cucumber. And I've got the Calypso cucumber. And I've also got sugar baby watermelon. My grandson loves these things. But that is what we have ready to start now. And we have to make some room on that bottom row more than likely. And I only start one row. And remember now, my rows are 50 feet long. So let's take, for instance, if we plant squash, we're going to plant it on uh, two foot seed spaces. So. We're talking that far apart. I'm only going to plant one row of each kind of that squash. But three weeks into that planting, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to start another row on the opposite side of that garden, so I can constantly go back and forth with succession planting. Anyway, that's the way I'm thinking. That's way I'm, what I'm planning for. Right. Two plots, both of them 50 by 50, and they'll have the equal amount of rows in each side, so I can go from one side to the other you know, planting and having another row coming up behind it because guys come June, July around here, the squash bug pressure is unreal. You may get one picking off of it, bam, they gone, it's gone. They'll, they'll just no time. You have beautiful plants down there one day and look down and every one of them be folded up the next. It's crazy how fast they find those things. But, you know, I've learned to try to pick the eggs off the leaves when I see them. I haven't tried to dishwash or dish soap spray and all that stuff. I haven't tried that yet, maybe this year, but I try to get the leaves off of it. And I guess, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's a good way to look at it. But, you know, you'll see, and I'll do some videos on it, but you'll see what I'm talking about. They will annihilate these squash plants. So, not looking forward to that, but I am looking forward to squash. I don't eat so much squash as my family does, but I do like the Benny's green tent and I do like the sunburst. And, uh, matter of fact, yeah, they're still in the pack. I didn't even see them in sunburst squash. These little things are great on the grill with uh, 
Dale seasoning and a little bit of bacon grease. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna get off here. I gotta find something else to do. I got to go down to the chicken coop and get the eggs, and I got to feed these little turds over here on the other side. The chicks that we had on video a week ago. Give you guys a look at these. They are growing like weeds. I had to fill that feeder up every three days. That's how much them birds are eating now. And there's 24 of them in there. But they're all healthy. I haven't lost one yet. So I'm going to try to sex them next week. Um, the wing feathers should be a little bit more developed. I need a good rooster out of that bunch. The rest of them I'm hoping for hens. My luck, they'll all be roosters. But anyway. Guys, I'm going to get off here. I got work to do. If you haven't already, reach over and hit that subscribe button right there in the right hand corner and click the bell notification so you get notified every time I put out a video. Like I said, we got a lot of stuff that's fixing to hit us. Um, we're going to be moving at a real quick pace here pretty soon. I'm hoping I can get all of it on video. But uh, as always, guys, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you watching. As always, I'll see you on the next one.